Hey everyone, welcome back to Owl Dragon Adventures. I'm Rob McPherson, and this is my solo review of Three Sisters by Motor City Gameworks. So Three Sisters is a new roll and write out by Motor City Gameworks that has been recommended to me several times. So I picked it up when I got back from PAX U this year and I started playing it solo and I've really started to fall in love with it. It's a very simple and straightforward game. The premise behind it is that you are planting and tending to your garden that is made up of your main garden, which has corn, beans, and pumpkins. And then you've also got your perennial tracks, which is your different flowers that you can grow, which gives you bonuses. And then you also have your apiary where you're taking care of bees for honey. And then you've got your fruit garden. And then finally, you're working in the shed to kind of supplement the rest of the work you're doing throughout the rest of the garden. You can build up the amount of goods that are ready to sell. You can build up your compost, which helps you modify some of your roles. It's just a really straightforward, um, elegant roll and write that just kind of ties together everything really nicely. And it plays really, really quickly. Um, it's rated for, I'm trying to remember, uh, I actually... I think it's rated for about 30 minutes of play. Um, and that's definitely, for solo, actually, that, that might be a little bit long. I can get a, a game done in about 15, 20 minutes. It takes place over eight rounds. Each round, you start by rolling four die. And then depending on what the value is, you're going to put them along this rondelle system they've got going. So you start with the farmer token here. And so this is a two, so I'm going to put it one, two spaces out. This is a four, so that'd be one, two, three, four. And these are sixes, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you take this guy and you move him one past your highest number there so that that's where your uh, rondelle will start the next turn. And then you just go back and forth like in most roll and rights. You're just going to choose one of these different values. You're going to mark off in that garden section, either you're going to plant two or you're going to water the whole section. And then you'll take the rondelle action. And then the AI is going to do the same. You go back and forth amongst the die. Once you finish up the turn, you have a final round action. So uh, you have a shed action, which lets you just take a single action in the shed. You have rain, which all of your plants that you've planted so far, you can go ahead and make them grow by one space. You have your farmer's market where this goods track is going to come in. And depending on how many goods you have ready to go, you can go ahead and get some rewards for that. And yeah, and it just kind of alternates between those and you go through eight rounds and you see what the uh, what the score is that and then you compare it to the, uh, the the track. So it is a chase your own score style of solo game, which is not always my favorite, but um, I, I find I'm not really playing this for seeing what the score is at the end so much as I'm just playing it for the experience. So the gameplay, as I just um, explained, is very simple and straightforward. The first couple of times of playing, I was really buried in the rule book as I was doing the rules and making sure that I was getting everything right. But it's, it really does become really intuitive. Um, I just broke it out when I was on a work trip the other day, and I got through a game in about 10, 15 minutes. And it was just the last thing I did before I went to bed, just a nice, relaxing um, experience and just kind of checking off the boxes and, and going, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to have to give it a high on gameplay at this point. Um, accessibility, as I said, I, the first couple of times I was buried in the rule book a little bit, but I think it was less the complexity of the game and more just making sure that I was doing um, all the steps in the correct order um, and making sure that the AI was actually acting correctly. I think as a multiplayer game there's less complexity just because the AI takes certain actions and uh, it, it is noted right on the, the solo side of the board exactly what they do. They kind of just cross off options for you as they go, but just making sure I was doing that right. So I'd say it's a high accessibility. Um, it, I mean, it is a roll and write. There's very few roll and writes out there that I think are not high accessibility, but this, this I could teach to someone in about five, 10 minutes. So um, I'm, I'm very happy with that. The design of this game. Um, so I, I, I like spreadsheets. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hadrian's Wall is one of my favorite rolling rights out there, and it's been described to me as just an Excel book in game form, which is one of the reasons that I picked it up. Um, 
this definitely has a little bit of that feel to it. There's definitely a lot of different uh, areas where you can check things off and keep track of things. Um, but as I noted before, the synergies between everything is is just quite elegant and it's quite straightforward. The symbology on it, uh, the iconography, really just starts to flow together and really become intuitive as you start to play it. And it, it really is just nice. So whatever the number is here, you've got the numbers nice and big on the garden that you play, and then you, you expand out from there. Um, so I, I'd say that it is definitely a high design. Um, it fits the theme quite nicely. The artwork is really nice. Um, I like that the action board is is also very thematic. It looks like a bulletin board where you're you're keeping track of your garden and kind of just making sure everything's going well there for your um, for your farmer's market and such. The quality of the game. Um, so the only little ding I have against it, and this is just something I'm starting to really like with with Roland Wright, is that these are tear off pads. Uh, so this is an expendable game. There, there's a ton of uh, of sheets of each of the, the and um, they, they are they are two sided, which is really nice. But I've really started to like the dry erase style that's been coming more and more prevalent. It just makes it feel like it's going to last longer. Um, but that's that's a really minor thing. Overall, the I mean, it's a roll and write, so there's not too much to to grade on quality. But like the action board is a nice thick cardstock. I do like how they're not just standard dice; they actually uh, are custom dice for this game. They do have pumpkins on one side to represent the ones. Um, the marker is actually you know a custom meeple, so that's that's a nice little touch. Um, so I, I'd say that it's definitely got a high quality going. The value, this game was $30 um, I, when I picked it up, and I have played it so far about a half dozen times. Um, looking forward to playing it a lot more. I think for what it is for a roll and write, and for 30 bucks, you really can't beat that uh, for, for the amount of gameplays that I'm expecting to get out of it. I'll probably follow up in a couple of months and let you know if it's been staying on my table, but as of right now, I'd say it's definitely worth the $30. So overall, I'm really a big fan of Roll and Write games. I think this one gets a lot right when it comes to Roll and Writes. It it knows what it is. It doesn't try to be more than what it is, but in that respect, it ties together each of the different sections. It it feels like a continuous experience. It feels like it's a related experience. And where you're getting things, it's logical why they would tie together. So there's different things in the shed that help you with the fruit trees. There's different things in the perennial garden that also helps you with the fruit or with the apiary. Or apiary, excuse me. So it, you know, it just they they tied the theme really, really nicely together in this. And as I said, it's a 15, 20 minute play solo, and. I really just like a game that, you know, at the end of the night, I'm I'm tired. I just want to do one last thing before kind of wrapping it up for the night. I'm in the mood for a little bit of a brain burn, a little bit of that logic. And I can just kind of toss some die, uh, roll them out onto this rondelle and just check some things off and just kind of go through the motions. So I think it's a really solid game. Um, right now, I'm going to put it at about an 8 out of 10. Um as always, uh, that might go up or down a little bit as the year progresses and I get a few more playthroughs. But I think it's a really solid entry into the Roll and Write world, and I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. So thank you to everybody who recommended it to me. And uh, yeah, so if you have played Three Sisters, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. If there's any other Roll and Writes that I haven't hit yet that you think I should be playing, um, just go ahead and leave those in the comments. I'll let you know if I have played them or I'll let you know when I pick them up so I can. So if you like what you see here on Owl Dragon Adventures, do remember to give us a like and a subscribe down below. And as always, thank you for joining us on our board game adventures.